Hi everyone, I'm super excited to share my first PDF dress pattern with you, the Willa dress. The Willa dress is a very wearable style. It has lots of gathering details, puffed short sleeves, a low gathered neckline with tie and of course pockets. It's extremely versatile for sizing as it relies on your own body measurements for elastic. I'm all about comfort so when it came to creating the Willa dress she had to be a dress that you want to wear all the time and feel really comfortable in. In this video I'm going to talk you through every step of the making process. The pattern is available on my website and will be linked down below. I'm so excited to see all of your wonderful Willa dresses come to life. So let's get started. So this pattern is a digital download and you will receive a copy of the instruction booklet which you can either print or just have on your phone or laptop to follow along. You'll then receive two versions of the pattern. One is in A4 slash US letter size that you can print at home and piece together or there's the option of having a copy shop print version. And I really recommend having the A0 copy shop file printed because it just makes life so much easier. But if you are printing at home, I will show you quickly how you can piece it together. So if you want to print your pattern at home, this is how you go about doing it. So you just open up the file, press print. I'm just on preview on my Mac and I make sure it's not on double sided it's not scale to fit and it's scaled to 100% instead. This will just make sure everything is the right size still. Um, and then just go ahead and print. You can print one page to start with to double check it's printing correctly. That's always a good idea. And then I just printed out three pieces to demo how to stick the pattern together. So I like to take the left side off and just trim that away down the black line. Then with a Pritt stick, I run a small line across the join and then I just place the next piece of paper on top, joining the little diamond up. And you'll just continue adding the other pages until you've got six rows of ten. Then once you've pieced all of the paper pattern together, I go ahead with some clear sellotape and just reinforce the seams and make the pattern stronger. And this is just a reminder, when you print out that first page as a test, make sure you use a ruler to check that the sizing is matching up at the top of the page. But like I said earlier, I would highly recommend getting the pattern printed at a copy shop. Then following my size guide in the instruction booklet, choose the best size that would fit you and go ahead and cut out all of your paper pattern pieces. Moving on to some of the things you'll need to make this dress. The first thing you'll need is some matching thread for your fabric. Obviously if you want it to be contrasting thread then go ahead. You'll also need some bias tape. You can make this but it won't be shown on the front of the dress so I just buy mine on Amazon. You'll also want a ruler or a tape measure, some sort of pencil or tailor's chalk to mark out certain things and some elastic. There's more specific details for the trims in the instruction booklet but you'll also want some little snips and I quite like these little clip pins. I've been using those a lot recently. And then before we start cutting the fabric I always give it a good press just to make sure that the shapes are nice and even when we cut them out. Now we're going to move on to cutting out the fabric. There's a list of recommended fabrics in the instruction booklet but I would recommend something that's reasonably lightweight I like using cotton because cotton is just the best fabric to work with. It's so forgiving and easy to work with. I'm using a block printed cotton here and a block printed cotton is usually a really good weight. It's sort of like a cotton poplin but it's got a very nice softness to it. The dress won't work with any really heavy fabrics. I have used a slightly thicker cotton in the past to make this dress and it has worked so you can use a thicker cotton just steer clear of things like denim. There are some notches on the pattern pieces to take note of. I like to cut in by about 0.2 centimeters for these. The fabric requirements are listed on the listing for the pattern and they're also in the instruction booklet and then you can find how to lay out the pattern pieces to cut in the instruction booklet too. Just a little point to note here, if your bust size is quite large, then I recommend doing a toile of this top section just to see if you need that top channel seam because if you have an extra large bust, then it might be best to just take the top channel seam out altogether. It's always a good idea to toile a dress anyway. I often do that when starting a new pattern. Now that we have all of our pattern pieces cut out, we're going to start 
on either the front or back bodice piece and we're going to mark out the placement for the bias trim. The placement is noted on the pattern piece and it's also shown with the notches so those bottom side notches are where you're going to want to put your bias trim. So just measure out one length to start with and pin it at the top. To check that it's sitting straight you can use a ruler and measure from the bottom of the bias to the bottom of the bodice and then that will make sure it's even across the entire way. Then just go ahead and stitch both edges of the bias trim and now you have one of your channel seams ready to go. Then go ahead and add your next channel seam and then the one below that as well. And then once you've finished all of that you can go ahead and do the same on the front or the back, whichever you didn't start with. Now we need to add two little buttonholes to the front bodice. Because my fabric is quite lightweight, I added a little bit of interfacing just behind where I was stitching the buttonholes. These buttonholes will be used to thread your tie into later on. I had a few scrap pieces of fabric, so I went ahead and did a little buttonhole test. I am not the world's best buttonhole sewer, <laughs> so I always like to do a few little trials before I stitch on the final garment. And then once I've sewn my buttonholes, I just take my little snips and open them up. And there we have two finished little buttonholes. Now we're going to take one pair of sleeves and we're going to attach these to the front or back bodice. We're doing the same to the front and the back so it doesn't matter which way around you do it. So just place the sleeves good sides facing onto the bodice and pin it into place. There is a little placement notch for the sleeve if you want to follow that. Then we're going to stitch down a seam with a one centimetre seam allowance. Whenever my pattern says stitch a seam then it's always going to be one centimetre unless it's stated otherwise in the pattern. We're then going to overlock just the seam we've created. Don't carry on down into the channel seams because we need those to stay open. Give the seam a little press and then fold the sleeve open and press it open like so. Then go ahead and repeat those steps for the other sleeves. Now we're going to stitch the front and back together, good sides facing along the shoulder seam. I like to pin mine into place matching up the seams that we just created. And stitch the front and back together, good sides facing along the shoulder seam. I use my little clip pins here and they're super handy. So once we've stitched all along the shoulder seam, we can finish the seam with an overlocker or zigzag stitch. Taking it over to the iron, we're going to find that shoulder seam and press the seam allowance towards the back of the dress. So that that seam lies nice and flat, we're going to top stitch the shoulder seam flat around 0.5 cm from the seam, making sure we catch that seam allowance at the back. Now find your front and back neckline facings and we're going to place these good sides facing and stitch along the top shoulder seam. It is quite a tricky little bit of fabric to work with so make sure you don't twist any bits. Once we've stitched that seam we can finish it using an overlocker or zigzag stitch. And back to the iron and this time we're going to press the seam allowance towards the front of the facing. Then just like with the shoulder seam we're going to top stitch that flat about 0.5 centimeters away from the seam. We're now going to finish the outer edge of the facing using an overlocker or zigzag stitch. So there we go, that's the neckline facing ready to be attached. Now we're going to take that neckline facing and place it on top of the bodice, good sides facing, matching up the front to the front and the back to the back. I like to match up the centre notch and start pinning there and then I match up the shoulder seams and I just go all the way around pinning from there, making sure it's lying nice and flat. Once that's pinned into place, I sew all the way around the inside of the neckline facing. Once you've stitched all the way around the facing, the front curves need clipping. This will just help when you turn the facing back towards the back of the dress, it will sit nice and curved. So when clipping curves, just be really careful not to clip into the stitch line. We're going to push the neckline facing away from the dress and understitch on the facing, close to the seam, about 0.1 centimeter away. I like to use the inside of the sewing machine foot as a guide. When you're stitching all the way around, just make sure you're catching the seam allowance so that it points towards the facing. Doing this understitching will help give us a crisp fold and keep the shape of the ruffles once they're finished. 
Once you've finished the understitching, give it a little press and then turn the facing through to the inside of the dress and press the seam flat. I then go around with my little clip pins and pin the facing flat into place so that it's sitting inside the dress. And then with a pencil, tailor's chalk or your machine foot guide, I mark two centimetres around the entire neckline facing. We're going to stitch a line two centimetres around the top edge of the neckline facing all the way around. So just take your time with this, make sure it is pretty even because we need this to be a good channel seam for the tie to go through. So once you've stitched two centimetres all the way around, we can then mark out the next line, which needs to be three centimetres from that facing edge. Again, you can just use your machine foot if you don't want to mark this out, but so that you're being really accurate, it's a good idea to mark it in pencil. So once you've stitched that, you can then fold the front bodice over and you can see your buttonholes are sitting nice and central in that channel seam. And at some point we will be threading the tie through there, but not just yet. I'll then go and give the facing a little press so that it's sitting nice and flat. Now we're going to fold open the bodice and overlock or zigzag stitch the edge of the sleeve. It's time to work on creating the pockets. You'll have four pocket pieces in total and we're going to finish the curved edge of each pocket. You don't need to overlock the straight edge just yet. So this is what your pocket pieces should be looking like. Now we're going to take one of the skirt pieces and make sure the good side is facing up towards you. I'm going to take one of the pocket pieces and place it good sides facing with that straight edge going down the side of the skirt. There's some side notches on the skirt pieces to match up your pocket placement. So just find those notches and then place the pocket piece on top of those. I'll then pin that pocket into place and take it over to the sewing machine and stitch one centimetre down. You've now got one pocket piece attached to the side and we're going to go and overlock all the way down the side of the skirt. We're not joining any skirt pieces together yet, we're just finishing the edges so that when we do join them later on they will already be finished. Then go ahead and do the same for all of the other pocket pieces. Pull the pocket away from the skirt piece and give it a good press. And now you should have all of your pocket pieces attached and ready to stitch together later on. I then place one of the skirt pieces on top of the front bodice and make sure that's pinned into place, matching up the front centre notches and just pinning that all along with my little clips. Once pinned into place, I'm just stitching along the waist seam. And then I go ahead and finish that seam with an overlocker. Taking the dress over to the ironing board, I'm going to press that waist seam towards the bottom of the skirt. And again, I'm going to go in and top stitch 0.5 centimetres away from the waist seam, making sure I'm catching that seam allowance at the back. Then just go ahead and repeat all of those steps for attaching the skirt piece to the back bodice. This next step is where we're going to start adding the elastic. So I'm going to show you how to measure the elastic to be the best size for you. So with the top channel seam we want to measure just underneath the bust and you want to stretch the elastic slightly so that it's got some tightness to it because once we put it in the fabric it's then going to be a bit less tight anyway so we need that little bit of extra stretch. With that measurement I then add an inch and just make a mark. I then measure where the next channel seam will sit about an inch down around my ribs and I take a measurement of that, again add an inch on to that measurement and then the final one I measure just around the waist and again add an inch on for seam allowance. Then it's a good idea to mark out which ones are the top, middle and bottom because we're now going to chop them in half and have one at the front and one at the back. So make sure you label them all top, middle or bottom. So to attach the elastic into the channel seams, it can be a little fiddly, so take your time. I attach one end of the elastic with a safety pin at the end I'm inserting it into the channel seam. I then have this very handy drawstring threading tool, which I tie a knot at the other end of the elastic and thread it through the channel seam. Once I've threaded it through the channel seam, I carefully take out the safety pin and give it some back tacking or a bar stitch 0.5 centimetres in from the edge. So we want to make sure that it's still within that one centimetre seam allowance. 
And then go ahead and do the same for the middle one, attaching it at the edge with a safety pin and then threading it through again before finishing off the edge with a good row of stay stitches. And then you guessed it, go and do the same for all of the other channel seams. And then the best way to even out the gathers is just to pull it like this and then it all sits evenly. This next step is optional, but I think it's quite nice to make your own tie that matches in with the fabric. If you've chosen to use a thicker fabric than I'm using, then it will probably be quite tricky to make the tie. So I'd maybe recommend just buying some trim to use as a tie. So I start by cleaning off the edge of my fabric roll and then I will go ahead and rip about five centimeter width strips and I ripped two of those. The exact lengths you need for your trim are in the instruction booklet at the front if you need those. So I create one really long piece of fabric that is five centimeters wide and then I give it a good press and then I fold it over and press the good sides to be facing. Then using the folded line of the fabric as a guide, I mark that on the one centimeter line and just stitch all the way down. So you want the width to be one centimeter. I then trim the seam allowance down to be about 0.5 centimeters. This does create a bit of waste, but you can actually end up using these off cuts as little bits of ribbon, so it's okay. We're then gonna cut a small notch on the fold at one of the ends of the tie around 0.5 centimeters in. Then using a hairpin, I'm gonna thread one end of this through that hole we just created and then the rest of it goes inside the channel. Slowly, you're gonna push the pin down into the tube of fabric, manipulating it over the pin as you go. It's often quite tricky at the start, but you just have to be a bit patient and get it over the hump to start with. So just keep going, keep feeding through, and then once the tie has been turned the right way around, we're gonna stretch it out onto your ironing board and give it a good press. And there we go, now we have a custom tie that can go into the channel seam. Don't finish the ends just yet because we need them to fit through the channel seam. So now we're gonna insert the tie and we're gonna attach one end to a safety pin or your threading tool and we're gonna place it in one side of the buttonholes and just work it all the way around that channel seam. It can be a little bit tricky at the shoulder seams but just be patient and it will go through in the end. So just keep threading it through until you come out of the other buttonhole. You can manipulate the gathers around the top so you get the best fit for you, but this can be done at the end and it's easier to do whilst wearing the dress. You can finish the ends of the tie now if you like, or just leave it and come back to it later. I just tie it into a rough little bow. Now is also a good time to roughly check the fit. So pop the dress on and just hold the side seams together and see if they're gonna be too tight or just about right. We're now gonna fold the dress on top of itself, good sides facing, and we're gonna pin all the way from the edge of the sleeve, around the underarm, down the sides, around the pockets, and all the way down. Making sure on your way down to match up certain bits like the sleeves, the waist, and the pockets. And then we're gonna stitch down the side seams. And when you get to the pockets, you're gonna put your needle in and then turn at a 90 degree angle and go all the way around the outside of the pocket and then back in and carry on down the rest of the skirt. Now we're going to overlock just from the under sleeve down to the waistline. We don't need to overlock any further because we finished the side seams of the skirt earlier. So once you've overlocked the top bits of the side seams, then go ahead and put the dress on the ironing board and press open your skirt seam so that it sits nice and flat. Now it's time to work on the sleeves and we are so nearly there. So we're going to start by folding the sleeve edge in by 3.5 centimetres. I go around and add a few pins and then I take it over to the ironing board and press that flat. We're then going to stitch 2 centimetres from the outer edge all the way around the sleeve. And then we're going to stitch a line 3 centimetres from the edge, but this time 
We're going to leave an opening of about four centimeters so that you can thread your elastic into this channel seam. Now we need to measure the elastic to go in the sleeve. So I measure quite high up around the bicep on my arm. And again, you want to pull it taut a little bit and add about an inch. This time, instead of cutting the elastic, I just marked with a little bit of black pen and left the length there so that it was a bit easier to thread through. So I attached the elastic to a safety pin and I started threading it through that channel seam. And then once I reached the opening again, I just pulled the elastic until I could see the little mark I made earlier. I then attached the safety pin to the other side of the elastic so that it was held in place and I'm gonna go and try the dress on. So you want to make sure the elastic isn't too loose, otherwise the sleeve's not gonna hold any sort of volume and it's probably not gonna look how you want it to look. So just make sure there's enough tension within the elastic in the sleeve, but don't make it so tight that it's uncomfortable. So once you've found your desired fit, I just hold it in place and then take it over to my machine and add a few stay stitches before trimming off the excess. And then I also go ahead and close up that channel seam. So there we go, that's one little sleeve looking very cute. And then just go ahead and do the exact same to the other side. This is where I decided to finish off the ends of my tie at the front and I just tied mine into little knots at the end. Finally, it's time to hem the bottom of the skirt. There is a skirt facing included in this pattern but you don't have to add this if you'd prefer to do a small rolled hem. But to create skirt facing, we're going to attach the two pieces together, good sides facing, and stitch down the short edges. Then taking it over to your ironing board, press those seams open. Using an overlocker or zigzag stitch, finish the top edge of the facing. I'm now going to place the skirt facing on top of the dress, good sides facing, and we're going to start by pinning the side seams and then just work your way around making sure that it's sitting flat and nice and even. And then we're going to stitch all the way around that bottom edge. Once you've sewn all the way around, push the facing away from the bottom of the skirt and understitch on top of the facing, making sure we're catching the seam allowance in the facing. Then take your dress over to the ironing board, press that skirt facing away from the skirt before folding it under and pressing it under the skirt. Now using some little metal pins, I just go all the way around the skirt facing and pin it into place, making sure it's exactly the right size to fit inside the skirt. And we're gonna stitch along the top of the facing about 0.5 centimeters from the top edge of that facing. Then I give the dress one last press before I try it on and adjust the gathers at the neckline and make sure they're all looking reasonably even around the back and the front. Just take a little bit of time to manipulate the gathers and get it sitting where you want it to. And there we go. That is your finished Willow dress. I really hope this tutorial has been helpful. I know there's a lot to take in and if you're a beginner it can be very overwhelming but hopefully if you're giving it a go you've had fun making the Willow dress and please do share your beautiful creation with me on Instagram. I always love to see them. It makes my day and hopefully we'll have lots more patterns coming your way this year. I hope you're all having a wonderful day and I will see you all in my next video.